You know how in sport, when someone loses, we hear a bunch of excuses from the side that lost. The ref was a jerk, the grass or ice or whatever the court is made of wasn't right, the opponent cheated, etc. In the world of political wrestling, this week's round of the Democrat debates saw a disastrous performance by candidate Kamala Harris. She suffered a series of glancing blows by Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard just humiliated Kamala Harris in front of 10 million people. Tulsi Gabbard praised for pummeling Kamala Harris' record. Kamala Harris was destroyed at the CNN debate by Tulsi Gabbard, confronted for being a corrupt prosecutor and hypocrite. You do realize I didn't mention the excuses for nothing, so what was it that came up this time? This is a clear example of Russian disinformation happening in real time. A hashtag created and promoted by Russia Today against Kamala Harris and supporting Representative Gabbard, who is an apologist for another Putin puppet, Bashar Assad. Hmm, another Putin puppet? But the Russia issue didn't even come up while candidate Gabbard was boxing her way through the debate. Let's turn to Harris's press secretary's Twitter for the explanation. He's dug up February's article from NBC News and now wants journalists to see it. Since Gabbard announced her intention to run on January the 11th, there have been at least 20 Gabbard stories on three major Moscow-based English language websites affiliated with or supportive of the Russian government. RT, the Russian-owned TV outlet, Sputnik News, a radio outlet, and Russia Insider, a blog that experts say closely follows the Kremlin line. The CIA has called RT and Sputnik part of Russia's state-run propaganda machine. It's never too old when the right time comes. RT wrote and reported about her. I know the definitions of things such as proof and investigative journalism have been tweaked a little lately. Well, this is probably a good new example. Anyway, don't you see the connection? RT did report on someone who is challenging the typical hawkish narratives in American politics. Yeah, we do that quite often, and it's called encouraging pluralism. But never mind that. Some have it well established in their mindsets. Tulsi Gabbard's a product of the Kremlin. And as you've heard a minute ago, she's supporting serious President Assad. Just on a factual basis, uh, Bashar al-Assad is a murderer and a torturer. Do you not agree with that? Do you, you... I don't dispute that. I will never apologize for doing all that I can to prevent more of my brothers and sisters from being sent into harm's way to fight counterproductive regime change wars. A meeting with Bashar al-Assad, which I'm sure you understand, is a very controversial meeting to take. And of course, every anchor has a different perspective and different questions to ask of you. Every so single time for three me, years. This is where the propaganda comes in. When I hear the name Tulsi Gabbard, I think of a sod apologist. Well, you're putting words in my mouth that I've never said. The issue here is how can we help alleviate the suffering of people? Just really one moment. Is he an enemy of the United States? An enemy of the United States is someone who threatens our safety and our security. There is no disputing the fact that Bashar al-Assad in Syria is a brutal dictator. What if she actually starts doing well in the primaries? I can smell some yummy Russiagate. The new recipe book's already out.